Good morning, everyone. Very warm welcome to our worship today. Very good to see you. Very good to be with you once again. Uh, Just by way of notices, can I say a huge thank you to the friends? Uh, A wonderful, wonderful concert yesterday evening. Um, Lovely to see so many people in church, and what a dazzling array of musicianship. Uh, brass and singing. Absolutely wonderful. So thank you so much for a wonderful evening. A little more practical, um, that the electoral roll is being updated. So if you have any information or additions, please do speak to Cliff uh, after the service. Probably not during. Uh, Just checking. Thank you. Another date for your diary, which is already in the notice sheet, and that's to say that it will be here before we know it, but Ascension Day, we're having a benefice Eucharist here in church at seven, and we will be led by Bishop Jack, Bishop Jack Nichols, who's a former Bishop of Sheffield. Uh, Please do come and hear him. He is absolutely fantastic. So we look forward to hosting and welcoming Bishop Jack. And last, but uh, absolutely not least, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, here's our annual parochial church meeting. Uh, And then after that is supper. There are still tickets available. uh, So please do come if you can. I rather like the idea of having supper following the meeting. It's uh, an encouragement to keep the meeting flowing. Uh, So uh, I look forward to that exchange of fellowship tomorrow. So we're going to continue in our worship now with our processional hymn, number 250, and we're going to sing the first three verses, verses 1, 2, 3, and 7. So the first three and the last verse. We stand to sing.
And so we worship now as we live, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Please would you be seated. Again, a warm welcome to our worship as we continue our Easter journey. Today is also known sometimes as Good Shepherd Sunday, uh, and that's for the gospel reading that we will hear in a little while. But it's also known and set aside by churches throughout the world as Vocations Sunday. And so as we gather today, we give thanks to God that he calls all of us to varieties of forms of service in his church and throughout the world. And so as we gather today, we pray for openness to his Holy Spirit, that each of us may discern the call of God upon our lives. And as we continue in our worship, I'll be uh, changing some of the text to reflect that vocation theme. But for now, we spend a moment in quiet as we acknowledge the presence of our risen Lord here amongst us today. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to God by way of confession. I set no store by life. I only want to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord has assigned to me of bearing witness to the gospel of God's grace. So let us now confess together our failure to live up to our calling. Now may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high.
as we stand. Let us pray for the whole ministry of all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit now for our first Bible reading. Today's reading is from Acts 4, verses 5 to 12. Peter and John are arrested and made to give an account of why they are preaching that Jesus has been raised from the dead. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made Peter and John stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel, that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals, by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. As you're able, I'm going to invite us to stand as we sing our gradual hymn, number 393, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You.
Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So may I now speak in the name of the living God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Please do sit down. So I've been a parish priest for ex almost exactly a month. And I was working out that uh, since I've been preaching, I seem to most times come up with uh, a cartoon illustration. And I promise I don't normally do that, but again today, in preparation and thinking about what I wanted to say, I haven't been able to get a particular cartoon out of my mind, and so there will be copies available after the service. But it is one, and um, somebody might be able to help me after the service. It's one I'm sure somebody here has mentioned to me, but I can't remember the context. So when I'm telling you about the cartoon now, if you do remember it, can you just look surprised? <laughs> we'll just see how that goes. So the cartoon shows Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt, and they've got to the shore of the Red Sea. Moses has dramatically parted the waves, and there are two huge walls of water lying on each side. And the way ahead to freedom across the seabed looks seemingly invitingly ahead. But there's a little caption that is under the cartoon. And one of the Israelites has clearly said something to Moses. And Moses responds by saying, what do you mean it's a bit muddy? Well, there are numerous ways we could use this illustration, but today on this Good Shepherd and Vocation Sunday, I want to talk a bit about vocation, God's call on our lives, both individually and corporately. And in that cartoon that I mentioned, God's people in the Exodus story have been called very dramatically out of slavery to begin their journey to the Promised Land. As we'll remember, they've seen incredible 
and terrible things. Plagues aplenty, the seas parted with Pharaoh's mighty army hot on their heels. So yes, they've been released from terrible captivity by the call of God on their lives. But the road ahead is not straightforward by any means, and it will indeed be, at times, a bit muddy. But that dramatic calling out leads them into the wilderness, where many, many times they would get it wrong. They complained. They turned away from God, even faced with pillars of cloud and pillars of flame, even with heavenly provision of manna from heaven. In short, this was a formational journey, one where God, as a refining fire, led them, knocked edges off, met them where they were, but couldn't leave them there. And that is, my brothers and sisters, how God works. He meets us where we are, but cannot leave us there. No one who met Jesus up close and personal could remain the same, one way or another. But let's move forward a bit to today, and also called by the God who in Isaiah says, I have called you by name, you are mine. I often use that text at baptism, just that line. And I often say to people, here's the Bible reading, it's so short, I'm going to read it twice. I have called you by name, you are mine. But with all vocations, ancient and modern, they can be summed up, I think, quite neatly by the wonderful author Mark Twain. I don't know if you've heard this one that he wrote. He says this, The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. I like that. Also, I like Pope John Paul II was famously asked about the most important day of his life. Somebody said, was it ordination as a priest, consecration as a bishop, selection as a cardinal, election as pope? No, he replied, it was my baptism. A former bishop of Guildford wrote this about vocations. All talk of vocation must begin with God. His wonderfully diverse creation means every person has unique gifts, abilities, and motivations. God calls us as individuals to respond to him, both as a human being and in ways that reflect the uniqueness of who they are. They become a combination of who people are and what they do. And those who are baptized into the church are not simply a collection of individuals, but a community, the body of Christ. So straight away from our baptismal calling that we all share, we see that wonderful blend of the individual, yes, and the corporate. Who is God calling me to be? What is God calling us to be? An old college chaplain once told an assembled crowd, be careful what you pray for, you might just get it. Which were wise words, considering God's call on our lives. And I can't resist adding this one. The same chaplain also said, in church, always pray for someone who annoys you. That way, you know that you'll be prayed for. I'll just let that sit for a little while. I have no idea what he means, but it seemed a good thing at the time. But it's very easy for me to stand up here in one sense and talk about our vocation individually and corporately. But I think sometimes the reality can be that we end up exhorting everyone to give 110% 
in response to God's call. But that reality can very much sometimes be due to living life that all we've got to give is 30%, 20, 10, or even five. And sometimes, tragically, we can be made to feel that we have nothing to offer God or the church. But the beauty of it is God is very, very good with even the tiniest, tiniest mustard seed. He'll take that 5, 10, 20% and will make it bear fruit beyond our imagining. And a very important point also to make is that vocations are certainly not about encouraging everyone to be ordained. But if you think God might be calling you to do that, do have a chat. But of course, that has been the pattern of my own calling. And I can tell you at length, but I won't today, about my own calling. It was a very definite experience, age 16, with Mr. Bainbridge, as the lower sixth former I was. I can still remember his lovely brown suit. And there we were in the careers office I was all set to be a chartered accountant. The crash would have happened a lot sooner if that had happened. And at the end of the interview, he said, well, your economics grades seem to be okay, Steve. Um, and then he looked at my address. He said, oh, you live in St. James Vicarage. He said, have you ever thought about being a priest? And I went to form the word no, and I couldn't. It was as if a bell went off. And then... I spent the next 20 years trying to fight it off, but God won. But more seriously, for me, those 20 years were a time when I needed convincing. And I like to think they were a gradual enabling. An enabling that continues to this day, both for me and indeed for you. So what about you then, individually? and us together. Part of our journey as baptized people together is indeed to encourage one another in that baptismal calling, in finding, using, nurturing our God-given gifts. It's so important using our gifts for the glory of God and the building of his kingdom. As you know, I'm still new. You know each other better than I do at the moment. Is there somebody you know here today, or not here today, who you might encourage to say, have you ever thought about X or Y? They might run a mile, but give them space and keep praying. I wonder if anyone um, has been watching the relaunch of Gladiators on BBC television. Um, I know Rachel uh, and Benjamin and Sophie and I have. Has anyone else watched it at all? Um, it's a relaunch from the 1990s, and there's a whole new array of gladiators, these huge, great people. And um, I have to say, in our household, the one called Legend is a particular favourite. He's what you might describe as tongue-in-cheek arrogant. He's always being interviewed saying, I was awesome out there which I kind of like. He doesn't really mean it. I don't think so. But one week, he was interviewed, and he grabbed the mic. You're not going to argue with him, I have to say. And he said, there's no I in team, but there are five eyes in individual brilliance. There's no I in team, but there are five eyes in individual brilliance. I haven't counted them, but I'm going to take his word. He's bigger than I am. As a church, we do indeed want people to shine. So individual brilliance, yes, to use their gifts. And yes, we are called to be a team, a body, even greater than the sum of our parts. God calls you and I ever forward. He meets us where we are, but cannot leave us there. And in all of that, we are also called to be faithful. As the hymn puts it, 
we trust and obey, for there's no other way. So both today and into the future, here's to listening to what Jesus, the Good Shepherd, has to say to us here and now, listening for the promptings that will lead us on, writing the next chapter in the building of his kingdom in this place, in this benefice to be and beyond. May God bless us as he meets us where we are, but cannot leave us there. Amen. So as the family of the church, called and loved by God, let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and for showing us your everlasting care for those in need. God of all hope, shepherd of the sheep, guide us into your paths of righteousness and lead us through the doorways of your compassion that we may be channels of your listening, your healing and your reconciling love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our right. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church and for all who are called to use their gifts and share in your pastoral ministry. We pray especially for church leaders in their shepherding of the world church, that they may lead and care for their own flocks by following your example wisely through love and service. We pray for ourselves for your guidance day by day in those areas which disturb us, asking not that you lead us the easy way, but by your way that is right and good and leads to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the world that was given to us as an inheritance to pass on to future generations. Teach us to look after it and to care for it wisely, to share its gifts more fairly, and to work together with all your people to ease its sufferings. We ask your blessing on all shepherds, farmers and fishermen, and all who work to provide us with food and clothes. We pray for the hungry, whose lives are narrowed by need, remembering especially the people of Burkina Faso, Mali, Sudan, and the occupied Palestinian territories. Thank you, Lord, for the work of action against hunger and all who are providing food. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our families, friends, neighbours, 
and all who need to hear the voice of Jesus, who knows each one of us by name. Thank you for protecting us, for guiding us towards green pastures where we can be nourished by your word, and for leading us to pure still waters where we can be refreshed by your love. As we remember the way the early church lived in one heart and mind and shared everything they had, may we too be always mindful of the needs of others less fortunate and always ready to welcome the newcomer joyfully into our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who've lost their way in life and for those who long for you and your peace. We pray for the weak and vulnerable, for those struggling with illness, anxiety, or problems they cannot solve, and for those who must live depending on others for their every need. Lord, bring them comfort and reassure them that you're with them always in their suffering and that many are praying for their healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have died and for those who ache with sorrow in their loss. We remember especially at this time Colin Shepherd and any others known to us. May they find rest as you welcome them into your great sheepfold of unfailing care. May all who mourn find comfort and strength in the assurance of your goodness and love, this day and in the weeks ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Everlasting Father, you have called us to be your people, poured out your goodness on us, and called us to love one another as you love us. As we go out this week in the power of your Holy Spirit, give us grace to enjoy all your gifts to us and to make known the amazing love of Jesus through the care we offer to one another and all we meet. Lord, show us your brilliance. And we say together, Merciful Father, accept Accept these these prayers for the the sake sake of your your Son, Son, our our Saviour, Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. As you're able, please would you stand. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the risen Lord. Alleluia. And so may the peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer one another a sign of that peace. We continue with our offertory hymn, number 589.
Heavenly Father, as we set before you these gifts of bread and wine, bless also the gift of our hearts and minds as we offer our lives in your service. For Jesus, the Good Shepherd's sake. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Heavenly Father, source of all that is. For you have called our world into existence and filled it with abundant life. You called a chosen people as your own and led them in the way of holiness. You called your beloved Son, in whom you were well pleased, to give his life for us on the cross and rise again in glory. And now we give you thanks that you call men, women, and children to equip your holy people for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. 
阿门。Rejoice, singing God's new creation, as our Savior taught us. So we pray. Our Father, hallowed be Your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Please do come forward.
at the top of page 12, we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the boldness of the Spirit transform you. May the gentleness of the Spirit lead you. May the gifts of the Spirit equip you to serve and worship God. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon each of you and upon all whom you love and pray for this day, this week, and forevermore. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn this morning, number 612. We have a gospel to proclaim.
grow in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.